I commended Jimmy Dore on my last show for taking down the Young Turks. I've been telling you for a long time that the Young Turks are on the take. And as a result, they've been sheepdogging us into the DNC fold. Cenk and Anna are no more progressive than Elizabeth Warren ever was. So as Jimmy points out earlier in the video I'm about to show you, it's okay to call out people when they're wrong. It isn't being divisive when you point out faux progressives. It hurts the progressive movement drastically when we allow fakes to go along without exposing them. Jake and Anna have needed to be exposed for a long time. AOC and Bernie also have needed to be exposed for a long time. The COVID crisis and then Jimmy's idea about force the vote has brought a lot of people into the open that were hiding. So kudos to Jimmy for bringing things out into the open. However, I have some problems with the movement for a people's party, which I've shown you, and Jimmy is directly in support of them. Not only that, he calls out people who are not in support of them as bad faith actors. Uh, as far as litmus tests go, as far as third parties go, people's party, um, are you planning on supporting people's party candidates in this uh, next 2022 election cycle? Are you excited about this, about the projects of a prominent third party uh, making its way into the political arena, really for the first time in modern American history. I mean, all the third parties have been jokes uh, recently in, in, in America. Uh, I, you, you know, it, you, you can't, you know, when you say the third parties have been jokes, you, you can't really put all the blame on them because the establishment makes it impossible for third parties to actually get on ballots. You know, when Ralph Nader ran, they kept him off the ballots and they kept him in court trying to get on the ballot, right? And so he had to spend all this money on legal fees just to see, just so he could get on the ballot to be voted for. And that's what they do to, to put the parties all over the, the third party. So they, they have a million different, that's why Kyle Kalinske would always say, you, you can't do a third party, it's too hard because they have the system rigged but it's the only way we can ever get any uh, power electorally is we have to do that what i want to know is why do we have to try to get power electorally when everything ends up being bought and paid for eventually there will never be an electoral solution without a revolution as long as big money is allowed to own all the politicians there can be no electoral solution as i've said before and which is why youtube won't monetize me Blood in the streets is probably the only answer. At the very least, as I keep saying, we need general strikes and we need protests. And I say blood in the streets not because the people will be violent, but because the crackdown of the authorities will be violent. We have to, and I, I, people would tell me, well, you can't vote for a, a third party because nobody's voting for it. And if you do it, it'll help the Republicans. So that what they're saying is you can't vote for a third party until there's a bunch of other people already voting for a third party. Well, you have to be the first one to get that ball rolling. Exactly. So I support the People's Party and I'm excited to support them. Now, a lot of people have criticized them. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, uh, inside agitation, right? And uh, to me, it looks like those people are just fucking bad faith actors. Now, wait a minute. You already said it's okay to criticize things that aren't working. You've already said it's okay to criticize bad faith politicians. It also should be okay to point out why well-intentioned plans are doomed to failure or maybe even run already by controlled opposition. I'm going to make the case later in the show that sheepdogging us into the DNC fold, which you object to, is not much different than sheepdogging us into the MPP, into the Movement for a People's Party. If all dreams die in the Democratic Party, why will they live in a new party that's still trying to solve things electorally? infiltrating and because if let's if, let, there's a lot of problems with the green party you know what i don't do i don't spend any time on it nick brana is famous for bad mouthing the green party because i think he sees them as a competition even though they're trying to make this coalition of all third parties they don't help each other very much and there isn't really a coalition if we had a coalition of third party people and then we all got together and piled into the streets and said that we're not working tomorrow things would change rapidly but we keep thinking we can vote our way out of the mess we're in you know why because they have no power so yeah. when you see somebody making a career out of trying to uh discredit a third party with no power what the fuck is their real agenda that's what I, I did. Are there problems with the with the People's Party? Of course. Uh, get involved and try to fix it. But if there are whistleblowers, Jimmy, inside the movement for a People's Party and you try to get them fired, or at least your wife tries to get them fired, 
What about that? Uh, if not, go start your own third party. What I wouldn't do is spend month after month after month trying to get interviews to tell people how bad this third party with absolutely no power and no money is fucked up. I Why don't we tell them not to waste their time trying to build a third party when only a revolution will do? And after we have the revolution, then we'll need a party, then we'll need some sort of governing structure. But until then, we're not going to vote our way out of the mess we're in. I would go try to work and try to help build a third party somewhere. But that's not what they're doing, which is what makes me think they're bad faith actors. Yeah, yeah, no, without a doubt. And uh, without a doubt. the biggest was... loudest mouth, can I just tell you this? One of the biggest loudest mouths against the People's Party is a bad faith actor against me personally. She's doing that thing where Jimmy Dore's a right winger. Jimmy Dore, look at the people who watch his videos. They're all right wingers. She, she did that. So that's just a bad faith attack. Yeah. And so when, and it's the same person attacking Nick Braun and the People's Party, and they're just they're just bad faith actors. Again, are the, can there is there criticisms, legit criticisms of the People's Party? Do they have problems? Of course, everybody has problems, and they're, they're a brand new party, and they're trying to start, and they have everything against them, including Democratic infiltrators, Democratic Party infiltrators. So Kerry Barber, if you're watching this, is he talking about you or is he talking about someone else? He doesn't come right out and say who he's talking about there. They have everything going against them. They, they Believe me, they're trying to nip this in the bud. The mainstream media won't cover the People's Party. They're scared to death of a party that organizes along class lines instead of fucking identity politics. Yeah, and that that's why I, uh, I you know, compared to most other third parties, uh, the People's Party is succeeding in a lot of ways right i mean their their fundraising looks incredible they they're building out an incredible team uh they have this round of nominations for candidates that's looking super exciting so when i say that third parties really haven't done a lot compared to the people's party i i think that's probably a fairly accurate statement at least in recent years so what about all these exciting new candidates aren't they just going to turn out the way the justice democrats did once they get sucked into the swirling vortex of power They'll be bought out just like everyone else. And again, the left will be diffused. And that's the case to be made for this just being another kind of sheepdogging. Sheepdogging us into movement for a people's party is going to turn out no better than sheepdogging us into the DNC. It's a way to temper our convictions. Why, Jimmy, do you not advocate continually for general strikes and riots as a way to get ourselves out of this mess? You're very good at identifying what the mess is, but why will you keep barking up the wrong tree of movement for a people's party. Now here's Kerry Barber that I mentioned a few minutes ago with tea to spill. As a result of this broadcast, Shane Coplin, Indy Left, and the board of KRTD Media violated our syndication agreement prohibiting any interference in our unbiased reporting and decided to use false allegations that they did not know we had planned to do this story. So I read the rest of this post and nowhere does she say what this story is. Turns out she's spilling some tea about Steph, Jimmy's wife. The movement for a people's party has some big problems in its structure, in its governance, in its leadership, and the whistleblower on the inside has been blacklisted, blackballed. Apparently you felt a little guilty, Carrie, for not calling attention to this sooner because you were told by KRTD Media not to. I had that problem with you earlier when you were not jumping on the Bernie or Bust bandwagon. I kept asking you, why not? I guess even independent lefty media have the problem of needing to suck up to power. Even if that power isn't exactly corporate, but just comfy followers of your shows. I've been critical of comfy people since I started this show, and if we have to keep sucking up to comfy people and their opinions, we're never going to get a revolution started. Revolutions start with the bottom half of the economy. Jimmy's right when he says we need to organize along class lines and not identity politics. And that's why we're between a rock and a hard place, because our readership, our viewership, our listenership is tuned in, and they are educated for the most part, and they are comfy for the most part. And people who aren't comfy, who are following us, want us to tell the truth. They want us to stop sucking up to the comfy people who are sucking up to the oligarchs. And as long as we worry about who's watching us and how many followers we have, we're not going to tell the truth. At least we're not going to tell the whole truth. And if we're telling the whole truth, we need to say that sucking up to the people who want movement for a people's party so we can try to find an electoral solution is a bad faith approach. 
Comfy people don't want a revolution. And yet, a revolution is the only way to solve the problem. It's like being in an abusive relationship. As long as you just keep pretending that there's not a problem, you're just going to keep being abused. The electoral system has been abusive since its inception. Our founding fathers wrote the Constitution to keep comfy people in power. With liberty and justice for all never meant all. Here's the whistleblower I was telling you about, and this is what she has to say about Movement for a People's Party. What they can do. And when it comes to this bridge building thing, which I, I want to like... Bridge building means unity among different third party people. In perspective as well. I was purged, you know, with my peers Purge. um, in January. Um, others were purged in February. And Nick Grana and his national coordinator circle refused to go on platforms like the Vanguard who offered them opportunity to come and tell their side of the story or, or what was going on. Uh, Frank Analysis also reached out to that leadership and told them, you can come on our show and, you know, explain your side of things, et cetera, et cetera. And that was with or without us petitioners. So they had plenty of opportunity to really show their side. But see, now they're on damage control because a lot of things are starting to pour out. Like we're starting to see, for lack of better words, their panties all out in, you know, in public. And there are people who have still got blinders on, like, I don't want to see that. I don't want to, you know. And then there's us that's like, you need to look at it. You need to take off the blinders. You need to take off those rose-colored lenses and see them for who and what they are. Jimmy, you've always been good at that. You've been taking our rose-colored glasses off of us so we can see Bernie and AOC. What about your own organization? What about Nick Brana? I wrote this tweet to you, at Jimmy Dore and at Jackson Jason Hinkle, Danny boy. If you want a third party, call it the voting won't solve anything. We need a revolution party. And then hashtag general strike, hashtag revolution now, hashtag riots. Christina, one of the followers of the show says, yes, we could have a Russian revolution style vanguard party with mass strikes and protests with property damage. I've pointed out in previous shows that the property damage of the riots in 1968 are why we have the Civil Rights Act. Kelly Lane, whom I follow, she follows me, says, I support for a people's party, but I think we also need a larger coalition of candidates, a coalition that includes independents, Green Party, LP National candidates too, a large coalition of not the Democrats and not the GOP, and the number one fight has to be election security and election reform. But Kelly, you're advocating for an electoral solution. And at the end of the day, that's just another form of sheepdogging. Without an actual revolution, without the kind of power that the two socialist parties and the communist party had in FDR's time, we're not gonna have the muscle to make our demands felt. As Frederick Douglass says, if we can't make our demands felt, then what good is voting? That was a bit of a paraphrase, I admit, our unions were much stronger in FDR's time as well. FDR wasn't really our friend. He was a product of the capitalist class. He was a favored son. The only reason he did any good is because the people pushed him to do it. So Kelly, you're still thinking inside of the electoral box, inside the electoral trap, or at least inside the electoral pasture. We're being sheepdogged into a different pasture, but it's gonna do the same thing as the old one did. In this thread, I also said, what's the fucking point of voting for faux aggressives like Bernie and AOC? The same point as voting for a third party before an actual revolution happens. It's the point of all controlled opposition. Kelly agrees about controlled opposition, but not sure I follow exactly what you mean here. When I said tempering the convictions of the revolutionaries is what controlled opposition does. I said, let me be clear. Anyone advocating for any type of electoral solution before a true revolution happens is controlled opposition. If the shoe fits, dot, dot, dot. And apparently Kelly's thing is changing the voting machines, which means she's still trying to figure out how we can vote our way out of the mess we're in. The second half of the tweet about controlled opposition is, namely, to temper the convictions of the revolutionaries by lulling them into believing that they can solve anything by voting. George Carlin had it right. 
Politicians are only put there to give you the illusion of choice. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. So instead of playing the last part where he's criticizing Bernie Sanders, I'm just going to say he's had it right all along, putting pressure on AOC and Bernie because they are sheepdogs. I actually am going to play that clip because he fucking nails it. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, do you think that Bernie was just he really is like a tool of the Democratic Party? I, it, it sounds like it sounds odd to even be asking the question because it's obvious that he sold out the movement. But it's like, to what extent do you think that he really is like party to all the bullshit? I mean, now he's out there apologizing for Biden, saying that he, he is the new FDR and he's doing incredible stuff. I can't wrap my mind around it because it doesn't really seem like the Bernie of yesteryear, you know? I, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, Bernie's actions reveal that he's not the Bernie we thought he was. And Chris Hedges predicted this right after the 2016 election. He wrote an article called Et to You, Booty, uh, the, uh, uh, Bernie. And uh, he laid this out. He goes, when Bernie runs again, his his 2020 campaign will be a shadow of his 2016 campaign. It will, he will bring in all the corporate outsiders and bring them inside. And that's exactly what happened. You know, Faz Shakur came right from the Center for American Progress. And uh, so did Matt Duss, his foreign policy advisor. I mean, he got in bed with Nair Tanda. Yeah. And he got in bed with the Clintons. He got in bed with the... And he tried to win an election that way. It's just he did what Jake Uger did when he took the money and they tried to move to the center. It was just the dumbest thing in the world. And Bernie sounded like every other politician. He just kept saying Donald Trump is the most corrupt president. That doesn't get you any votes. That doesn't that's not going to get you any more votes. Everybody who already hates Donald Trump is already not voting for him. So you, you they were it's like they were having a contest who could have the, the 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 loudest vitriol against Donald. Who could say he's corrupt louder? He's standing next to Joe Biden saying someone else is corrupt. What a fucking dickhead. And uh and so so Bernie ended up sounding just like any other politician. That's why he lost. Uh he sounded just like any other fucking democrat. That's why he lost. Their whole point is to keep us in the DNC and to temper our revolutionary convictions. But if that's not the point of movement for a people's party, somebody please explain to me what is the point. As long as we can be certain, and we can be certain, that every new politician is going to be swirled up into the vortex of power and be owned by our owners, then it's all just sheepdogging. Any electoral solution is just sheepdogging. The only power that's going to work is union type power, especially if that takes the form of wildcat strikes. Yes, coalition building is great if coalitions are not trying to vote their way out of the problems. If coalitions are getting together to riot and destroy things, that's gonna work. If coalitions are getting together to strike, to not go to work tomorrow, that's gonna work. Voting's not going to work until we can put some serious whoop-ass on the people above our heads, on the Jeff Bezos kind of people, the hedge fund manager kind of people, the old money kind of people, the capitalist class that FDR had to appease. Those are the people we need to put pressure on. And frankly, voting is never going to do it.